hi, Genki Call here with Soul Forge offerings for the week of March 21st, 2021. We've got some exciting stuff in here today. Uh, a couple things not to be missed, but let's go in here to troops to start with. Uh, Bunny Nog is a miss. Does damage to an enemy, and if it's a knight, deal double damage, and there's a 50% chance to devour them if it is a knight. So, good to use in Sword's Edge or any place with lots of knights, but generally speaking, you know, it's alright. Um, this 5 times skull damage versus knights, that is the highest multiplier in the game that I'm aware of, so you can use him at the front of a Zul'goth team at Sword's Edge if you want um, to really do some damage. You only have 20% skull damage reduction, but that 5x skull damage during versus knights is pretty nice. 800 diamonds, not worth it to me personally, but you know, if you have him, you could try it. Borealis, on the other hand, is one that I use for leveling, uh, leveling classes. So with Borealis, um, he freezes all enemies. I generally don't cast with him because I run him with Zul'goth. Zul'goth is the one that freezes everybody. And then 65% skull damage reduction from those skulls that Zul creates and triple skull damage versus frozen enemies. Nice and fast. I'll put two team codes for you in the description box below so that you can check that out. Um, really nice leveling um whatever i mean for leveling classes really really nice um for me it's been amazing it, it has been amazing and i think it was boomstick fancy pants that gave me the team so thank you boomstick i love the team it's working great for me but the centurion zulgoth team is great but i want to use that specifically with elementalist and i have that maxed so uh let me skip past the mythics and go straight to soul zara from grosh Nak. she does damage to one enemy she gains some souls and if the enemy's life is greater she deals triple damage and gains triple souls so you can get up to 30 souls from one cast with Sol Zara. Um, she's pretty good. I mean, not something that's worth all those diamonds, but um, did I say 800? Yeah, it is 800 diamonds. Wow, that is a lot of diamonds. Um, personally, Borealis is the only one that be would be worth it to me in here for legendaries, and that's only because it has been so useful for that one specific team for me. I do use Borealis occasionally outside of that team, but Anyway, Frost Feather is eh. Damage to all enemies if there's an Ice Storm, curse all enemies. The big thing about Frost Feather is that she freezes all enemies when she dies. Um, but as far as the damage that she does to all enemies, Saga does the same amount of damage. The only difference is Saga doesn't have this, this last trait. And Saga is only an epic. So, yeah, eh. All right, that is it for the legendary. So let's go over the mythics. We've got Scorpius, who is great for running in um, Nexus because there are no Nexus troops that are immune to poison. So you run him with Magnus, who will uh, poison all enemies when he casts, or you run him with Eureli, who poisons all enemies just from getting a match for. You hit him with Scorpius, and you insta-kill. If they are poisoned, they will die. Unless, but as far as an explorer goes, uh, there are a couple of troops that are immune to lethal damage, but not in an explorer or a delve. So Scorpius is pretty cool. I'm really enjoying him uh, when I use him, but overall, I don't use him very much. So just take that information as you will. The Possessed King, on the other hand. <laughs> Here's the thing about the Possessed King. Um, he does damage to all enemies with a boost. There are three separate 20% chances to transform a random enemy into a demon, and I hate that. I hate that transform. That transform can be into a mythic demon. It could be almost dead, and you transform him. It's kind of like lycanthropy, only it's for demons instead of beasts, and I hate it. So, I don't use the Possessed King's spell. 
I use the Possessed King because I love this. Explode two random gems on four plus gem matches. It's super, super fun, especially with the Wrath team by D-Rock. Um, the Skull Waterfall team. Oh, love it so much. I will link that in at the end of this video. I call it Boom Max Fun um, is the title of the video. I just, just, just love that team. Uh, but again, it's very situational. I tend not to use the Possessed King except on that team because that one team is just so fun. But he is a good mana generator. As long as you're getting plenty of match fours, he will have those explosions and get you lots of mana. So he is an option for that. I just love him. But uh, Umanath, I would really like to have. She is considered to be the poor man's Zulgoth. I do not own her. Do damage to one enemy boosted by all of their skills with a 2 to 1 ratio, so that's half. So if they have 100 total, then it would be an extra 50 damage, right? Um, if they die, gain 10 attack and create 12 skulls. So um, that means that if they die, just like with Zolgoth's insta-kill, he will absolutely uh, insta-kill but um, he'll create all of those skulls regardless, but I digress. She will create 10, 12 skulls if they die. And then she will place Hunter's Mark on the enemies when doing skull damage, which means she's doing an extra 50% damage with her uh, attack. She can dodge skull damage, so, you know, those skulls can backfire, but she might dodge them and then gain four attack when matching four plus gems. So her attack will just keep going up and up and up. Um, would really like to have her, might end up crafting her because I think I've got the diamonds for it. However, I do want to point out that if you're looking for Ironhawk, he, it has not been in the Soul Forge for this particular Soul Forge cycle. So if you're looking to get Ironhawk, you might want to hold on to your diamonds. Uh, we're not finished though. We're not finished by a long shot. Okay, we are almost finished with the troops, but there are weapons that are very notable right now. But let's go over Ishtara. Ishtara does damage to all enemies, creates nine yellow gems, boosted by blessed allies with a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So she could create up to 13 yellow gems. And then 50% chance to bless a random ally when my turn begins and skull damage reduction by 40%. So uh, I like using her in delves beyond that. I just generally don't use her unless I'm using a dragon team maybe. But basically I just like to use her in delves and I don't use her beyond that. All right, let's get to the weapons. So the weapons, the Summer Aegis is one that I have seen people use. Um, it creates a mix of six green and red gems for each bright forest ally. That means Queen Titania. We, I mean, we've got some troops that use red in um, bright forest, and this could be useful on that team. It also does some damage. Um, I must have it because I need all of the weapons. Must have them all. So I will be crafting it. Um, of these two here, I think the Summer Aegis is probably more useful, but let's go ahead and craft that. And yay, new weapon! Now we've got the Fairy Ring. Fairy Ring does the same thing, damage to an enemy boosted by Fey allies instead, and then creates a mix of six green and purple gems for each Fey ally. This isn't locked into Bright Forest, it is for Fey across the board no matter where they're from. So um, I am also going to craft this. Ah! All right, got that. Then the Staff of Bright Forest. This is one of those 75 diamond, really cheapo weapons. Um, remove all green gems. Uh, you will get no mana out of it, but it will boost the damage that you do. And if they're from Bright Forest, it'll do double damage. So another one I have to have. And we will scroll down here and I will show you the exciting things that you don't want to miss. So, ha, huh, number one is probably, well, in my opinion, Trickster Shot. This thing is freaking amazing. So it's like Mang or Earth Fury, where it's going to eliminate all armor from one enemy, do damage, gain two magic, 
boosted by the armor eliminated. So if you are in an event and you are removing 500 armor for, from something, you are getting so much of a boost to your um, this purple number here. It is crazy how hard you can hit with this the second time you cast. Just really great for events and delving. It's just a fantastic weapon. I love it, love it, love it. And um, highly recommend getting it. Um, Another one that is very significant right now is the Celestial Flask, because this is the first time the Celestial Flask has been available um, since it released, uh, except for the people that bought the cam campaign pass, like myself. Um, they were able to get it with real money. This is the first time the free-to-play people can get it. So create three potions of either blue, green, red, yellow, or purple. That doesn't include brown. So that actually makes it a little more efficient. You get an extra turn. So if you blow up the board or you make a match and you use those potions and it explodes all over the board, you get so much mana that you just loop and loop and loop and loop. And I hate fighting it. And that means this is a must-have weapon. So it's fantastic. If Unless you don't like that play style, um, then I would recommend getting this one. Um, there is one more here that I think is worth crafting, and I don't see it. Where is where is it? Summer's Fury, I thought would be here. Am I missing it? Summer's Fury. All right, hold on. Troops. Just because I have to know. Uh, oops. Summer's Fairy. Bright Forest. I don't know. It is fabulous, and so I'm really wondering why it's not there. Hierophant. It's not the class weapon. I'm positive it's not. Yeah, Summer's Wonder is the class weapon, so I'm not sure why it's not available. I'm disappointed uh, for those of you that wanted Summer's Fury, because it's a really good weapon. But anyway, that is what I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!